Greetings everyone, Fru here, welcome to the Demo Hub, welcome to channel. In today's demo, we're going to go through unpacking how to work with packages within Snowpack for Python. It's such an exciting capability and we're going to go in and showcase one, how can you find out what packages are within Snowpack for Python. We're also going to look at the Snowpack for Python Anaconda channel. It's a powerful channel to be aware of so that as new packages are coming in there, you are very aware and can take advantage of those packages for your data engineering, data science or data transformation needs and use cases. And then also we're going to switch gears and look at importing packages that are within PyPy, but not necessarily in Anaconda. We've done a demo discussing the differences between what PyPy is and what Anaconda is. And you might run into those situations where you have a package, you really want to use that package, but it's just in PyPy, the package hasn't been curated and made it here to Anaconda. Uh, but you're in luck because you can still use those packages in Snowpack for Python. There's a little bit of a caveat there, and the caveat I could just call that out right away is the, it has to be a Python native package. So the package could not have something else. So uh, PyPy is unique because you can have Python, of course, but the Python package might use Java, Scala, C++, C Sharp, and, and other things are not truly Python. So in those cases, you might run into a limitation there. But if it's a truly native Python package, you can go ahead and bring that. And we're going to go in and see an example on how to make that work. Now, we're also going to go in and see how to take code from GitHub or GitLab or your favorite uh, source code management, your favorite SCM, and bring that code down so you can use it and take advantage of it in a collaborative way within Snowpack for Python. The exciting thing about developers is being able to reuse logic and you reuse work from the community or from what others have done. So being able to bring all of that into Snowpack for Python is an exciting capability. So let's jump right in right away. And the example we're going to see here first is let's take a look at the Snowpack for Python Anaconda channel. Links to all of this will be in the description below. So if you are working with Anaconda, there is a specific channel. If you're not familiar with what an Anaconda channel is, I've done some videos around that. So check around the channel, you will see those videos. So here is the Snowflake Snowpack for Python Anaconda channel. All the packages that have been curated by Snowflake vetted to be available in this channel. Uh, would be directly available within Snowflake and you can use that. You can either browse those packages here or if you go over into Snowflake Snow site and those packages will be available. There are two ways to really view the package. Number one is go to the object browser, look at the database of interest to you, open up the database, go into the information schema and you're going to see a couple of views but the one that we really pay attention to here would be the packages. So these are the packages that have been curated and is directly available inside of your Snowflake instance without you having to do any work. Truly amazing. So here, if we do a browse of that, it's going to show us the packages. Thousands and thousands of these packages are directly available here for you to use. Now, you can either view it this way or we can go back and go into worksheets. I have a simple query here that should show. I have a simple query here that can show us the packages that are available natively within this Snowflake environment. Searching for just Python packages because you can have packages in Java and Scala as well, but Python is of interest to us. Let me look at regex. It's a very specific package and we can see that package here. So if ever you are in doubt to say, is my package supported? I'm trying to use this package. How do I verify that this package would work with Snowflake Snowpack for Python? And the specific version of the package, you can always come in here, just put a quick query on top and see if that package is available. Alternatively, go over to the channel and browse directly in there. There is parity between both and that will give you a, a quick assurance that your package is available. Now, the second scenario is, and we're switching gears here to look at the situation where your package is not in, in you can't see it in, in the Snowflake, you can't see it in the Anaconda channel, but you still want to use it because the package might be in PyPy. So PyPy is a massive package index for Python, not as well governed and curated, in my opinion, 
as uh, Anaconda is. Anaconda has a little bit more rigor towards it, and so it tends to be a smaller package index. But PyPy is massive, and so it does have a lot of packages here that you might not see in Anaconda. But if you want to take advantage of that package, again, we've talked about what the caveat is. The main caveat is it has to be a, a true native Python package. You cannot have a Python package that is using other languages inside of it, uh, and that just will not work. So uh, again, PyPy, if you, this is what you want to use, we're going to go through to, to see that. Here is an example of a package that is within PyPy, but not necessarily in Anaconda. FP growth is the frequent pattern growth. It's a very common function or algorithm in the data mining space. So this is something that you might be using for your particular use case. It's available. We can see here in PyPy. But if we go over to Anaconda and search, let's just do a quick search here for FP growth. You might not see that, right? This is a rudimentary search I'm doing here. FP growth isn't available. To take advantage of this, what you're going to want to do is go ahead and to download the files. Now, one common question that always comes up is, do I download the wheel file? And wheel is a way of distributing Python packages, or do you download the source file? So what you want is the source file. You don't want the wheel file. It's not going to help you in our case. Download this. It's going to bring down the tarball. Once you have the tarball locally on your machine, unzip that. So using either the GUI or you can use a command line and do a tar XVF or something like that and unzip it. Once you have your zip file, go into that file. You're going to see this particular folder, which is the source code. Find where the, the PY, the Python source code is and grab that. So in this case, I'm just going to grab it and bring it outside here into this level of the folder. I'm going to go ahead and right click that and then zip it. So you're going to zip it by compressing that. Once you have it zipped, now you have a zip file ready to go. And this is essentially all that is needed to make this work within Snowflake Snowpack for Python. With the zip file available, let's go back into the code. We've done lots and lots of sessions and demos of Snowpack for Python and working with sessions. Once we have our Snowpack for Python session, the main thing we need to make this work is to add import. And this import is going to point to that zip file that we've referenced. Again, this zip file exists locally on my machine. And that's essentially all you need to make this work. It's that simple. Okay, now there are two ways to do this. You can either do it like this, or if you wanted to, you can put this zip file onto a stage on Snowflake, and that will be available on the Snowflake side, and you can also use it. And I'm going to show that a little bit shortly. Now, once we've referenced the file, we're going to go ahead and create our UDF. Again, the UDF is something we've done quite a bit and done demos on how to create UDFs within Snowflake, a Snowpack for Python, give it a name, a stage, it's permanent, replace it, and all of the good stuff. So this is the implementation of that UDF. The code for that is essentially the example code that is provided here. So we're not doing anything pretty novel. We're just using that for the demo. That's the code. It's going to take some values, a couple of words, and it's going to give us the frequent pattern within those words. Execute this. All right, so that executed successfully. If we switch over to Snowflake and we go into the code, now we're not going to be looking at packages. We're going to go in here, open up this, look at functions. We should have a new function here called fpgrowth underscore UDF. So that's a function we created. I do have a simple script here to take a look at that function. I'll open this up to get more real estate. So the function was called fpg underscore UDF. Call that. And with any log, it's going to give us the frequent pattern. Open this up, get this more real estate. This is a frequent pattern for those words we saw. So uh, we gave it a couple of words. We had X bacon soup, X bacon apple, soup bacon banana. And what is the frequent pattern in there? So it gives us X and bacon is one, which makes sense. X and bacon, they kind of go together. Bacon and X, hmm, 0 0.6, soup and bacon, one. That's surprising to me. But bacon and soup, 0 0.6, all right? You, you have that frequent pattern. Again, the goal for this is not to go into the algorithm and the utility of the algorithm, but just to show the concept that we can take a package that is not part of Anaconda and still bring that into Snowpack for Python and take advantage of that. So let's go back to the code. 
As I mentioned a little bit earlier, once we add import, it's going to get this imported and it's going to be used as part of the stage. To verify that, I'm going to go back here and take a look at the stage. Do an ls on that. Remove the object browser. We see a couple of things have come up to my stage. Sort by last modified one is this. So coming from full stage. Now this is a GUID, so you can't quite read what this is, but this is essentially that file uh, that we've uh, referenced and it's been imported into the stage. Alternatively, if you don't want to reference this locally, as we've mentioned before, you can always put this into a stage, give the stage name and directly reference the file as such. Again, this would all work as before. So pretty straightforward to do. Now, the last piece we're going to see here is working with GitHub. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Coming to this example, there is a GitHub page that's available in there for the source code by, by the developer for this project. Go back over to GitHub, paste that link. And this is a source code from the developer. So this could be Again, the custom package you found on GitHub and you want to use or your organization might be having code on GitHub or Git or GitLab or Bitbucket and you want to take advantage of that code. There are several ways to do this, but I'm going to show one option here. Here, we need the source code as before. We know how to download things from Git. It's pretty straightforward to do. You can do a Git clone. You can download the zip directly if you wanted to. You can clone this. Use whatever way you use to grab things from Git that process is still going to be similar. Now, once you've downloaded, the process continues as the same. Come into the zip file, make sure you have the source code. You don't want to have other things that are not necessary in there and just have bloat. So get the source code, zip that. And once you have a zip file, come back into your code, reference the zip file as before. Let me undo this. So reference the zip file as before. This would work essentially the same. So very straightforward, very easy to do. Now I'm going to leave some resources in the description below in terms of how to automate this. There's some really great articles on Medium where instead of you manually getting things from Git and zipping them, you can have a, a workflow to do that for you, right? Where you come into changes, you can kick off uh, a CI CD process to uh, do build the packages grab the zip files and put them into a Snowflake stage. It's pretty pretty straightforward to automate that. Some folks have written some really good articles on that. I'll make sure to leave that in the description below if you want to get into more advanced concepts like that. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Just a recap of what we've seen here. Snowpack for Python packages, how to view them, query them within the UI. We've seen how to explore the Anaconda channel that has all the packages. There should be parity between what you see on the Anaconda channel on their website and what is available in your Snowflake instance. So, so you have the confidence that if you're developing with that package, it will work on Snowflake. That's really the beauty about it. So you're not getting into dependency hell. Uh, that is the industry always talks about. Then you can also import custom packages from PyPy. PyPy is massive. If you have something in PyPy, not in Anaconda, you want to use it. There's a little bit of a caveat there, but you can go ahead and use that. And then we ended by looking at how to do the same thing for GitHub code or any other code for that matter. You might have just code sitting within your organization or something you want to reuse. You can zip it or you can just take the regular PY file. But in the example, we're zipping it up because we have more than one files in there to look at and do the session add import and that should get the job done hopefully this was helpful to you as always thanks for watching and sticking to the end if you do like this video like it share it with somebody that might get value out of it if you have any questions comments feedbacks let me know in the comment section below and i'll see what i can do again thanks for watching i'll see you in our next demo